the procession starts early in the morning. Very quickly, Paris is surrounded by an army of vehicles that use the device. Traffic is extremely dense. The slightest incident can create a huge traffic jam. To avoid this, a special police brigade is responsible for monitoring the road 24 hours a day. On duty this morning, John and Marine. They're just below there. You need to go inside an AVP. That's it, let's go. The morning starts off pretty bad. A physical accident. They announce an AVP on a public road. We don't know if it's physical or material. An accident has just occurred a few kilometers away. They need to act quickly. Every minute that passes it causes a traffic jam more and more important. There. There are already two ways. Rescuers are already on the scene, but no question of moving the cars until the police have clarified the circumstances of the accident. This white car just hit a black Twingo violently. This is a personal accident involving two light vehicles. We have an injured person. She's the driver of the Renault Twingo and the driver of the Citroën C4. The police are taking the victim's testimony, slightly injured, I had a huge shock in the rear. I had a nervous attack. Yes. You're nauseous, right? She is doing well. Yes, she is doing well, compared to the damage we see on the vehicles. He also questions the other driver who quickly recognizes his mistakes. All of a sudden, he fell asleep. No more sound, no more images. What does the black car do? I don't know. He turned the corner. It's okay, so nobody knows anything. For several minutes, two out off our lanes have been blocked, causing a blockage several kilometers. The investigation is over. The convenience store has just arrived. You must quickly clear the road to avoid another accident. Three and two vehicles to charge. Are you okay? It's going very well. Two vehicles to charge. But unfortunately, Marine and John did their best. What they feared has just happened. Good morning, sir. There's an accident 150 meters off. I think they're going to get their hands dirty. Right in the middle. There's an accident. On the way? Yes, 150 meters up. You have to look at the camera level. John calls for reinforcements. For now, he must speed up the maneuver. Every bit of debris should disappear. Do you have a broom afterwards? Yes. Sweep around. There's debris. It took 30 minutes to get the cars back on the road. John and Marine carry out about 15 such interventions every day. It's only a small part of what's going on at any given moment on this unique road, that is the Ring Road. A bitumen monster, 35 kilometers long, borrowed every day by 130,000 vehicles. An unavoidable road for anyone who wants to get in or get out of Paris. Motorists arrive via six highways, and 38 gates serve the capital. Completed in 1973, this axis was a symbol of modernity, an eight-lane highway in the middle of the city, useful but also dangerous. Spectacular accidents, like here this truck carrying a car. Flaming vehicles on the side of the road. Or even brides blocking traffic. On this unusual axis, anything can happen. Thousands of people work there day and night. Road workers. Repairmen or even Parisian taxes. It's the Bermuda Triangle. People are making arrangements to break down here. A highway lined with buildings, 120,000 people live all around. You can't listen to music because you can't really hear. It is also a refuge for many homeless people. A universe that hundreds of police officers watch over. And here, a simple traffic control can turn into a chase. The Nissan car, stop. Police, stop. 
you will discover the opposite side of the Paris Ring Road, the busiest road in Europe. First of all, that's what the peripheral is. Dense traffic which often turns into traffic jams. The traffic jam lasts for 8 hours a day, especially in the morning when people go to work. Trucks, vans, cars and motorcycles intersect and they are progressing slowly. It is 8.30 am and Hausin is a taxi driver. Like all driving professionals, he knows the pitfalls of the ring road by heart. After his morning coffee, he takes his first client. Hello. Hello. Are you all right? It's going very well. Is it better in the car? Yes. Hausin has been a taxi driver for 26 years. Despite the difficulties, he did not lose his enthusiasm. Even though the hell of the underworld is here, it's not a big deal. Let's go anyway. When you have to go, you have to go. His client has to go to the other end of town. At this hour, all of Paris is blocked. The ring road, even blocked, is still the shortest route. Are you ready, madam? Ready to go attack the periphery? <laughs> to get to his destination, Hausin will have to go around Paris from the south. And on this axis, no preferred lanes for taxes. Normally, it would take 30 minutes but he has to cross the worst part of the boulevard. A nightmare dreaded by all drivers. You see, there we arrive at a strategic location, the famous Port de Bercy. This famous door, here it is. It is a huge road junction where the ring road is joined by the highway that comes from the east of France and also by an express route. It is one of the main entrances to Paris. It is jammed 12 hours a day. It's the Bermuda Triangle. The famous. It's here. I swear to you. It's death. People are making arrangements to break down here. And of course, it didn't fail today. I think there are still accidents. There is an accident. A colleague. The slightest grain of sand, the whole machine is jammed. We lost 20 or 25 minutes anyway. Excuse me, madam. Yet when everything is blocked, there are some who pass anyway. It's the two wheels. That's the motorcycle. Motorbike transport of people. To avoid traffic jams, thousands choose motorcycles, but for them too, the ring road is full of pitfalls. Two wheels were the option Dylan chose. Every morning, he rides his motorcycle to go to work. It's a nice day to go to work. In traffic jams, its major advantage is that it weaves between cars. This makes it possible to divide the journey time by three on average. However, this practice is prohibited, but it is tolerated by the police. You always manage to get a little out of the game on a motorcycle. We are still more comfortable sneaking in. We have a lot less traffic pressure. But driving between two lines is an extremely dangerous practice. The small meter that separates cars is nicknamed by bikers, the death row. A moment of inattention, sudden braking. And that's what can happen. In the case of motorcyclists, the physical consequences are often significant. Of the last 10 dead on the outskirts, seven were motorcyclists. We all have at least one friend who has had a relatively serious accident on the Paris Ring Road. We all have a story like that dramatic. Do not play with the device. It's dangerous from morning to night, from north to south. As a result, Dylan is redoubling his vigilance. He knows the techniques for guessing behavior of the automobilists. 
Personally, I see a lot of lane changes by watching through the rear window. I look directly at the people or even directly in the rear view mirror. Excuse me, madam, please. The slightest touch while steering a car is a problem for him. It does not pass easily when there are people who are busy doing other things in their cars. He has been flashing for a quarter of an hour, but he has his earpiece, so we don't know what he's doing. Thanks the BM. My God, there we have a truck that had to be plundered because of a small blue car who had to walk past her. There was a certainly a contact. The truck's headlight. Distracted drivers, accidents. Dylan has to do this high-powered trip twice a day. But despite everything, thanks to his experience, it gets out of traffic rather easily. Well, I just got out of there. It's my arrival. It took me 40 minutes to get there. All is well. I love motorcycling. But the same is not true for motorists, because they're always stuck in traffic. Traffic that is out of the ordinary, constantly monitored. Indeed, every corner of the asphalt is scrutinized meticulously. There is even a peripheral control tower. We are in the south of Paris. In this police station, agents monitor traffic in real time thanks to 170 video security cameras. This is where calls from emergency stations come in and that they distill the first steps. I have you on camera right now. It would be wiser to put yourself behind the wall. From here, you can see everything. Officers are responsible for leading police teams on the ground because there is no shortage of incidents like that vehicle on fire on the side of the road. But what worries them the most are these objects that fall onto the road and cause accidents. And just so a plaster hauler has just lost part of its load. 6472 TMP. Immediately, John's brigade is alerted. Do you know which traffic roads the objects are on? We were called to Aubervilliers. There are placo plates on the pavement. It can be dangerous for motorcyclists. But in the middle of traffic, it's impossible to get off the tracks without risking one's life. So for this simple piece of debris, you're going to have to block the whole device. Watch out, the guy over there is on the other side. For that, they have a technique. The police van should zigzag as slowly as possible 300 meters before the plate. A very delicate operation because motorists are undisciplined. Are you serious? We're already on the sixth road. Once the four tracks are completely stopped, Maureen and John had to go outside to remove the plate. In less than 15 minutes, it's done. Contrary to popular belief, the Ring Road is the safest route in Paris. Last year, the brigade only had to report four fatal accidents. This is 10 times less than in the rest of the capital. It is approximately 9 hours 30 minutes. To the west of Paris, Housine finally arrives at its destination. It took zero minutes hour. longer than expected, and that's going to cost her client a bit of money. Now we're in luck. We have a clientele of all taxes in France and of Nevers would love to have. Isn't it? In the end, this race will cost nearly double the usual price, because a taxi that runs at less than 30 kilometers per hour changes the rate. It changes to an hourly rate. And it's not the same thing. So if you're stuck in a traffic jam for one hour, it's 35 euros per hour. All right. Of course, the customer is not happy. Whereas if you were driving normally, it's 1.21 euros per kilometer. In other words, if the device had been fluid, the customer would have paid 20 euros and 50 cents. But this time, she will pay 35 euros. The big morning rush is passed. Hausin dropped off his client. If it could be like that, 
a little piece of paradise. Look, I'm going back on the outskirts. Everything's going well. Look, it's rolling. My car is in the process of moving, in fact. Look, it says, Port de Bercy, five minutes. That's not pretty. This morning we were there, it was marked 45 minutes. Housing is happy. He can finally speed up. During the day, the road is quieter. It's later, during the evening patrol that the brigade has a lot of work to do again. This time, officers are responsible for maintaining discipline. Have you seen it? What? There is a pedestrian. Oh, is that all right? It may seem unbelievable, but the police are used to this kind of scene. What do we do? Nothing. What do you want us to do? On this highway in the middle of the city, it is not uncommon that pedestrians cross the eight lanes at the risk of their lives. He's going to do the shopping. He's going to cross. But did you see? It is very dangerous when he crossed. We were 80 kilometers per hour. Imagine if a vehicle doesn't see him, if he was hit, so it is likely to cause great damage. But the most common offense for these police officers, it's cell phones behind the wheel. Hey! Lower the windows. Are you all right, sir? Are we not bothering you at all? Can't you see it's the police next door? You are always on the phone and not getting close at all. It's the scourge of evening traffic. They are serious now. To fight against boredom, drivers take care with their smartphones. This is dangerous because it causes numerous clashes. On the other hand, the white Clio is on the mobile phone. This time, the police decided to crack down. Caught in the act, this man will have to go to the checkout. Did he get it? What did you ask him? I asked him to get out of that door, to control him, because he was using the telephone. Normally for this offense, it's three points and a fine of 90 euros. Police check, turn off the ignition. Yes, but you were on the phone, sir. It doesn't matter if you have it for two or five minutes, you were on the phone. Your driver's license and insurance certificate as well. But Marine, a young brigadier, prefers to play the prevention card. The person admitted the cell phone offense, so I'm going to be lenient. I'm going to punish him for using devices. It will only be a fine of 22 euros. The offense may seem trivial, but on the outskirts, the telephone while driving is the cause of more than one accident out of 10. The gray card on your driver's license. Good day, bye. Here, everything went well, but sometimes simple controls go awry. Last night, Francois, another member of the brigade took over. JF7191. Was he sleeping behind the wheel? I didn't see it. But look. It also tracks down minor offenses. He spotted the driver of a van who holds his cell phone on his ear. The latter is trying to slow down to deceive the police, but Francois is not fooled. He speaks to him via loudspeaker. Don't be afraid to move forward. We'll be waiting for you. Get up to my height but he still understands a bit. The driver seems to be complying. We're going out next time for a checkup. Please go in front. But nothing is going to happen the way the police imagined. You stop at the lights, you speed up the hazard lights, and you cut off the ignition. Inexplicably, the man starts again. You just passed the lights. I asked you to stop there. The common control turns into a chase. The driver flees to the nearby suburbs. The police are in his wake. We are faced with a refusal to comply. The individual went to the suburbs. He is driving a Nissan vehicle number 861. To evade the police, the man does not hesitate to burn the fires. 
launched at more than 70 km per hour in the city center. Go left. It's good. It's okay. Drive. At this speed, a serious accident can happen at any time. Attention. The police need to slow down. The fugitive takes the opportunity to get ahead. Right. Here, here, here. All right. The driver is always in front. He has not succeeded in evading Francois. The policeman tries again to reason with him. Stop, be serious. Stop. Stop your engine. Stop. The black car, stop. In his frantic race, the driver narrowly misses the accident with other cars. All right, let's go, Miss N. Stop. Police. Don't do nonsense. Don't be silly. Stop. Despite the injunctions, the chase continues. But at the corner of this street, the van is forced to stop, blocked by traffic. Stop. Stop. Don't take chances. Don't make your case worse. Switch off the engine. Halt. Hand on their weapons, the police surrounded the vehicle. Francois managed to get into the car through the passenger door. What went through your head? I'm working, sir. What went through your head? You realize what you did there. Go on, get off. Put the handcuffs on him. Come on, let's go out. Get off. Obey. That's enough of your nonsense. The man is handcuffed. Aged about 50 years, he doesn't really look like a thug. Am I having problems? Do you have a license? No, I don't have a license. You realize that in your maneuver, that there were pedestrians. I know, I did a big stupid thing. You stop if you don't have a permit. Do you know what's going to happen now? You have a refusal to comply. Try to do the best you can for me. What do you want me to do better for you? Do you have an ID, sir? Have you consumed alcohol? You drank. Try to do something for me as best you can. Watch your knee. Well done. Thank you. Unlicensed and drunk. This driver took insane risks to get away from the police. I can provide you with the driver's SNPC. For a minimum driver's license problem, you have individuals who are moving into agglomerations, who do anything, and who put people's lives at risk. The man is taken to a police station that deals with traffic offenses at night. Watch your head. Don't hurt yourself. Have we forgotten anything? No, it's good. No kidding. I don't know. I was scared. I was frightened. You could be my father. Eventually, he will be condemned six months suspended prison sentence. But nothing ever stops on the device. All that nighttime activity, some are even privileged witnesses to it, because they live all around local residents. This is one of the specificities of this highway located in the heart of the city. Before its construction, instead of its layout, there was the zone. It was a vast wasteland, the remains of the last fortifications of Paris. From the beginning of the 20th century, immigrants, the marginalized in the capital, settled there, forming a gigantic slum. They were called the Zonards. But in 1956, they were dislodged. You have to clean up space. The government has decided to undertake what will be the biggest construction site of the time, the Ring Road. We are then at the heart of the 30 Gloriosas. It is the era of the triumphant automobile. And 17 years later in 1973, the concrete mixers came full circle. It was Lan Zitron, at the time, who announced it. In a few days, going around Paris by car without encountering a single red light will no longer be a dream. The construction of the last section of the Ring Road has just been completed. But no one thought that all around, we were going to build buildings. 
Today, 120,000 people live on the edge of the loop, 80% in social housing. Among them were Rosa and Jamal. For these residents, the Ring Road is still a strange sight. It's aesthetic, especially when you look there from afar. Like a river, in fact. So many there are. Do you ever get out the window like that? Never. <laughs> it's only when journalists come to the house that they put their nose on the balcony, because on their windows, every day, 250,000 vehicles pass by. For 30 years, they have lived 20 meters away from cars. 30 years of incessant noise. It runs all the time. As you can see, it is not bearable. Besides, after a while, you get tired of making your voice sound bad. To be heard, we have to close. You can't hear anything if you want to turn on to watch a movie. We can't even listen to music because you can't really hear. You don't hear that background noise any more than you would like to hear. Exposure to noise can cause insomnia, high blood pressure, nervousness. But an even greater threat looms over them. An almost invisible disease. Look, it's black and thick like fat, like oil. It's really disgusting. Every day Rosa picks up this dirt on her windows. They are exhaust gases. Benzene, fine particles, carcinogenic dusts. So since January 10, the city has limited the speed to 70 kilometers per hour instead of 80. A measure supposed to reduce pollution by 5%, but that will probably not be enough. Despite all these inconveniences, Rosa and Jamal are not complaining. They have modest incomes and in this HLM, the rent is only 500 euros per month. Living in Paris is a luxury, it seems like a luxury. We are well off anyway. There is a choice to be made. The noise. Bye. But along the Ring Road, there are other local residents who live under much more precarious conditions. For many, they are invisible. Homeless people are settling in every corner from the Parisian belt. There would be over a thousand of them in this wild space made of noise and concrete. They found refuge. One of them has set up a camp west of the capital, very close to the Chic districts of Paris, with an unobstructed view of the traffic. It is 9 a.m. Vladimir is preparing breakfast. If you want, I can prepare food for you. At Vladimir's, there is always a plate for guests. In fact, every morning, he also cooks for his friend Alexander. The only problem is the rats. They go after my food. I can't keep anything. That's why I go to the shops every day to collect products that are going to go in the trash. Despite the rats and the hydrocarbon vapors, Vladimir, 45 years old, originally from Russia, has been living here for two years already. This little piece of land has become her home. Three meters above the periphery, he does everything to feel at home. This little shrub, I planted it last week and that palm tree two weeks ago. The florist across the street gave them to me. I like it. I like having plants. Since I have to live here, I might as well make sure it's beautiful. Vladimir has learned to beautify his daily life. It must be said that her life has been tough. He spent 13 years in a prison in Latvia, so the trip for him is not so bad. I was part of a mafia. It was at the fall of the USR. I wanted something as fricked as the ministers. Ministers flew. Everyone flew at the time. I handled the knife and I handled the gun. You know, drugs in Russia, it was a lot of money. I went to prison for 13 years after a settling of schools. In fact, I killed a drug dealer. 
того, что я убил дилера, который продавал. Released from prison in 2007, Vladimir has been leading a vagabond life ever since. He was introduced to the rudiments of Parisian life by Alexander, who is his friend. But Alexander let go. He lives next door to Vladimir, but under even much more difficult conditions. It's his place. Alexander sleeps in this filthy air vent. That's where he sleeps. Slushy mattresses, no stove to cook. The only thing that keeps Alexander going is Vladimir's help. All people are different. We all have a different education. Everyone chooses their life. Most of the time, the two friends do the rounds a stone's throw from their house. They never leave the banks of the ring road again. A new day is coming to an end. Most Parisians come home from work. Cedric, for his part, starts his own. He is a repairman. And at 19 o'clock, he starts his shift. No, we don't have a choice. Well, it looks like it's going to work once we get on it. I think it's going to go pretty quickly. No sooner had he arrived, was the first intervention offered to him. A vehicle is broken down in the middle of the lane. The technique we depose it is that it... Always. Why? It's more practical, and then if you get behind, we're going to get off to see the driver, we're going to ask him what's going on. And then if I get behind, I'm going to have to reblock a lane to go back to the front, while now, I'm going to go in front right away. With each intervention, you must go down to the heart of the traffic. It was completely jammed. You don't have a safety vest? I just bought it. Put it on. If not, get in my truck. I'll take care of the car. The driver recklessly got out of his car. On the asphalt, the life expectancy of a pedestrian does not exceed 20 minutes. Leave it. It's okay. Get in my truck right away. Cedric knows the risks. He must first get the driver to safety. Then, clear the way as soon as possible. All right. Is there someone coming to pick you up? Yes. Okay. To avoid wasting time, Cedric leaves the vehicle in the closest car park, and he leaves immediately. Almost immediately, he is called upon for another intervention. Cedric, you have a broken down Citroen. Well received. Here we go, yet another one. Return to the periphery. The objective of any troubleshooter is to intervene in less than 20 minutes. We're going to try to work our way through. It's going to be hard. There is no emergency lane here. To get back on time, you have to force your way in. It's an accident, a motorcycle on the ground. Since it was an accident, Cedric is not allowed to board the motorcycle as long as the police have not made a statement. I can't charge until the police are here. Again, the time spent on the road will increase the risks for Cedric. And the situation is going to get worse. Because seeing the convenience store, another driver stops and asks him for help too. What is going on, sir? I had a liquid leak. Break? Yes, that's it. While Cedric is trying to identify the failure under the hood, he does not see the danger coming from behind. If not, I will charge you. Are these the dangers of the ring road? Yes, the over accident. When there's an accident, people don't look at what's going on next to them, only in front of them. So, like this. The truck almost did a second one. Cedric is still unmoved. However, the driver and himself could well have been hit. To be a convenience store on this very particular path, you have to be a bit hot-headed. 
Why did you choose to work on the periphery? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's adrenaline. Being in the heat of the action. A few minutes later, the police finally arrived and Cedric can get rid of the motorcycle. But very quickly, new intervention. This time, the driver had the right reflex. He took refuge in his car after reporting his presence. Good evening, sir. What is going on? I am out of gas. Stupid stuff. Didn't you see your gauge? Yes, I saw it, but I was duped. I forgot. I thought I would hold on, and that's it. The gas pump is not far away. This error of judgment is going to cost him dearly. Do you know how the rest is going to go? Now? Yes. For me? Yes. Well, no. I'm going to pay my bill, he's going to put my car down and then, that's all. No, is there a surprise? The surprise is the price. On the outskirts, convenience repairmen don't do what they want. Prices are set by the prefecture. But it's Kadrick who's giving the bad news. How much am I going to pay? 181 yes, euros anyway. and 77 cents. At that price, you can take the credit card and dampen the machine. Because you have a big truck. You have to pay for that. A few minutes too long in traffic, and this driver is good for going to the pump the most expensive in its history. We're going to fill up, you fill up. You lose a customer for a while. I will be back. Thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. Each night, Cedric helps 15 motorists stranded in traffic. It is 9 p.m. At this hour, everything should be very quiet. And yet, the ring road is still clogged. From now on, no one passes. And too bad for those who were going back home. Make us like that now. This kind of blockade infuriates Parisians. This evening, 12 kilometers or a third of the ring road are cut off the traffic. For a very simple reason, it is necessary to clean. That's it, the ring road is yours. Yes, the road is ours. Work can now begin. This empty decor, it's now the domain of cleaners, traffic cops who cleared the smallest obstructions. Bumpers, anything that drails and can be dangerous. The screws, the hubcaps. At each closure, we pick up everything and we always pick up just as much. Tonight, 100 agents are at work. Here, everyone is active but at their own pace. The members of this very special brigade have been selected for their infallible glance. Now we're looking for potholes. We are looking for potholes to cover them. It tracks down and fills up all the imperfections of the road. With a traffic of 130,000 vehicles per day, bitumen must be patched constantly. Workers have to take care of empty exit ramps. Some users use them as open landfills. Rene, the person responsible, is outraged. While out and about, what you find are bags of cement. Sheets of cement, pieces of glass. In the cold and the rain, you have to clear the snow most often by hand. A thankless job, but essential. No driver knows these men. Only Rene can salute their work. Those are good guys. They are all like that. At night, they are all working. I can say one thing, when I retire a bit like everyone else. I won't miss the ring road, but I'm going to miss these guys. Their work will continue all night. 
And thanks to them, tomorrow morning, hundreds of thousands of motorists will drive again the main merry-go-round on the ring road.